All right, it's time for Engines of Septa. I took way too long. I got delayed by a bunch of things, like the videos I needed to catch up on, the documentaries, school, and <laughs> a bunch of other things. But um, I think it's finally time for Engines of Septa. We're going to talk about the Silverliner 5s. Now, there may be not much to talk about because they are rather new and they don't have much history yet. But because I like the talk, it's probably going to be just as long. So, without further ado, let's get started. Is the thing still on? Shoot, how do I fix it? The Silverliner 5s were built by Hyundai Rotem between 2010 and 2016 to replace the aging Silverliner 2s and 3s dating back to the 1960s. A lot of people think these cars were made in South Korea, and well, that's sort of half right and half wrong. Some of the main parts, such as the frame, were made in South Korea, and then final assembly took place in Hyundai Rotem's own plant in South Philadelphia. In the fleet, there are 38 single units, numbered 701 through 738, and 41 married pairs, numbered 801 through 882. Cars 735, 736, 871, and 872 are all owned by the state of Delaware. However, they are used for system-wide service and are not restricted to the Wilmington-Newark line, much like the airport Silverliner 3s. They are pretty rare though with that state of Delaware plaque on them, so next time you're downtown in Philly, keep an eye out for a Silverliner 5 with that weird white stamp on the side of the door. They are pretty rare and hard to find. Some of them have the stamps already weathered, so good luck on trying to catch them. Funny enough, we were supposed to get these cars back in 2005, five years before they actually came. But design delays, contract disputes, and Hyundai Rotem needing to build that new plant in South Philadelphia delayed the delivery up to 2010 keeping the old Silverliner 2s and 3s in service for another five years, despite their lack of ADA compliance, failing reliability, and of course, one of them, Car 257, catching fire in 2009 due to a faulty heater. The Silverliner 5s were around the same size as the Pioneer 3s, measuring 85 feet in length and having a width of 10 feet 5 inches. The design's top speed is around 110 miles an hour, but in service, SEPTA does not let them run faster than 79 to 100 miles an hour. They resemble a stretched Market Frankfurt Line M4 car or the M8 cars used by Metro North. You won't, mate! The Silverliner 5s have three doors on each side, one each a quarter length from each end of the cars, for boarding and aligning at stations with either high or low level platforms as well as an additional door adjacent to one of the quarter point doors used at the high level platforms, usually for faster arrivals and departures at the major center city stations, such as University City, 30th Street, Suburban, Jefferson, and Temple. They also feature wider aisles and seats and dedicated areas for wheelchairs and power scooters. And instead of using the glass reinforced plastic boards that we're used to seeing on the Silverliner 4s, they instead use LED panels to display where they're going and where they're headed, as well as additional things to keep the Philly spirit up, such as Go Eagles! And of course, as we all know, the Eagles won the Super Bowl. Yay! Another new feature that was new for SEPTA was automatic station announcements. Basically, a certain robotic voice would be played over when the train is approaching the next station or is arriving at the certain station, so the conductor wouldn't have to yell in between cars or use the PA system on the Silverliner 4s. Although a lot of people still prefer the old PA system on the 4s due to its Philadelphian dialect and style. The Silverliner 5s were all equipped with really nice sounding K3LA horns. They sound a lot different though compared to the old Santa Fe K3LAs that we all know. They sound a lot like the ones Florida East Coast uses. Here's some samples.
The fives also feature incredible acceleration. They can go from zero to 30 miles an hour in about 10 seconds. Watch how fast this set flies out of Fern Rock. say gotta go fast they also feature the same coupling system that the silverliner 2 through 4s have the wabco n2 however they cannot mu with the 2s and 3s correctly due to their age they can however mu with the 4s for towing purposes or equipment moves yours truly has seen such a big one at the 30th street station that's why during rail rodeo 2012 as seen here there had to be a separate crew running the two, three, and four car, while the Silverliner five cars had a separate crew inside of them, so they could be controlled. They still do it, but rarely. Another fun fact, is SEPTA is not the only one that uses Silverliner 5s. In 2010, Denver's Regional Transportation District selected the Silverliner 5 for its new commuter rail line system. A total of 66 cars in the married pair configuration were purchased for a total of $300 million, numbered 4000 to 4065. The first four cars were delivered to Denver on December 3rd, 2014, with service starting in early 2016. The differences between the RTD and SEPTA cars include support for only 25kV 60Hz AC electrification, four high-level doors per side, less powerful traction motors, full-width cabs, and ugh, e-bells. Another interesting fact is some users of audio equipment have found that the presence of tracks carrying Silverliner 5s have introduced detrimental electromagnetic interference to playback and recording of audio. This phenomenon also affects the audio and PA electronics inside the cars, although Hyundai Rotom had fitted filters to lessen the effect on the internal equipment. So if you really so if you're one of those guys that are really into electromagnetic interference, go buy a SEPTA owned track where fives are usually roaming, and there you go. But as we all know, no matter how new technology is, it ain't always perfect. The blistering freezing weather of 2016 caused some of the doors on the fives to be jammed wide open. Now that's something you don't want during a big blizzard. Plus, in July 2016, SEPTA had removed all 120 Silverliner 5s from service due to cracks being found in the equalizer beam in the axle frame assembly on the cars that would cause some of them to lean off-center, much like how Daisy did in the Thomas & Friends Season 21 episode, Springtime for Daisy. I can't really show you actual episode footage because Mattel will be all over my rear end. Oh well. Because of this, SEPTA was totally screwed. With one third of the fleet out of service, schedules had to be changed, trains were overloaded, running over 20 minutes late, and to make matters worse, some trains would have to skip most stations till either Center City, or the next major station, or the end of the line due to them being just so full. It was a nightmare people like me called Septageddon, and I am a survivor. But then, all of a sudden, there was a sign of hope for SEPTA. Other transit companies knew SEPTA was in trouble, so they decided to lend in a helping hand. So SEPTA leased two ACS-64s, four AM fleets, and a Metroliner cab car, all from Amtrak, two NJT ALP-46s, a series of Comet 4 coaches with two Comet 5 cab cars, Mark II coaches, and one Mark IIc cab car. The Keystone set was sent down the Paoli Thorndale line as a local to Bryn Mawr. I mean, obviously, it suits that area. The New Jersey Transit set appropriately went down the Trenton line as an express. While the Mark coaches were used all over the place, either mixed in into express sets pulled by toasters, 
or just put on one particular train in general. The set without a cab car was usually used on an Express to Trenton, with a SEPTA Comet car as the cab car, while the full set that did have a cab car first started out as an Express on the Wilmington Newark line, but eventually ended up on the Paoli Thorndale line as yet another Express. Pretty odd how they switched them around a lot. Eventually, after all the repairs were completed and vandalism was cleaned off the cars, the cars slowly began to make a comeback in September when four cars were put on the Fox Chase line, and by November, all 120 cars were returned to service. When I first saw them at Jefferson and first heard their distinct K3LA horns at Lansdale after not seeing them for months, you can imagine how happy I was to see them again. The lease sets slowly began to be returned to their original owners with either the Keystone set or the NJT set going first. However, the Mark set with one AC64 still remained on the Paley Thorndale line as an express. This was so that crews could become a lot more familiar with the AC64 and how it's handled. That's without mentioning SEPTA is still receiving their AC64s to replace their tired old toasters. Wait a minute, wrong photo! Thank you! As of now, all the cars are back in service, and whether you like them or you hate them, I think they're a perfect addition to the Silverliner family, as well as the history and fleet of the Southeastern Pennsylvania Transit Authority, serving the Philadelphia area since 1963 and regional rail operations since 1980.